Hello, welcome to the production vlog for Ghost House. I'm the writer of Ghost House, and my producer said that, I don't know, fans like to see this kind of stuff or whatever, so I'm going to walk you through what happened on our holiday, um, I mean what happened on our film, um, and this is all meant to chronicle, you know, how films are usually made, and the process that filmmakers like me go through, so strap in. So my first thought when coming to make this film was that Thailand is bloody gorgeous and I had to visit it. That's basically how it started, if I'm honest. Um, I just found a producer to give me the nod and I just jumped on a plane straight to Thailand. Um, I spent some time on the plane thinking of a film idea because the backs of the seats didn't have those little screens you can watch movies on. Uh, but I got distracted drinking those tiny bottles of whiskey and kind of forgot about it. So I was hoping that like once I got there and immersed myself in the culture, that something would come to me and I'd be able to write a film. I have arrived in Bangkok, Thailand. Still kind of with no idea of what the film's going to be about, but you know, that'll come to me. And maybe in the spirit of things, we can come up with an opening scene right now. So, okay, so a couple come out of these doors uh, and a taxi driver approaches them. Greeted by a taxi driver, what could his name be? Shit, what are some Thai names? I don't even know any. Um, Gogo? Because he drives taxis. Uh, hey, you have driver! Gogo best driver in Bangkok! And so they get in his taxi and they go to their hotel room. Is that really boring? Nah, I'm sure that's fine. As I was catching my taxi to the hotel, I realized what I'd written for the opening scene was literally just what had happened to me. Like, there was no fiction in it at all. It was like, I was catching a taxi with my partner to our hotel. The The only difference was that the guy's name was Run Tep and not Gogo. Um, and like, to be honest, it wasn't really much of a problem that I was just writing down what I was doing. It's just that I was writing a horror film and in reality, no demons are likely to come up to me in 7-Eleven. Maybe otherwise I would have just written down everything I did for an hour and a half and then just like made that into a film because these days films don't need to be good uh, or even interesting. They just have to have two minutes of usable footage for a trailer to make it look interesting and they need to make money. That's about the criteria. So in this taxi, I realized I was in a unique position to you know, have a Thai person represent themselves, um, kind of, you know, a bit of pressure, but on behalf of Thailand, you know, it's the first Thai character that we see in the film, so... Oh, look at that! In a fat man! He's so fat! <laughs> <laughs> People in Thailand, we also eat McDonald's, and if you eat a lot, sometimes you'll get fat, just like America! So, we the same. So naturally, I, um, I completely fucked that up. Apparently that eyesore across the road is my hotel. Now how the hell am I meant to get inspired to write a film when I have to stay in that? I can see through it. I can see the fucking sky on the other side of it. Unbelievable. So it turns out that my hotel was, was much, much nicer. I mean like world class nice, like really, really, really good. So I kind of, I checked into the hotel and so afterwards, I went outside, uh, and I found these these little houses. Huh. Look at this little house. Oh, there's a packet of cigarettes there. I wonder what the house is for. Little birds or something, maybe. Hmm. So I, uh, I was taking a cigarette from one of those little house things. And this guy came up to me and said that they were ghost houses and that I shouldn't take the cigarette from it because it's meant to keep the spirit inside the house. Can you believe that? 
Anyway, uh, no inspiration yet for a horror film. I guess I'll uh, keep looking around. So I'm at the train station waiting for my train, and I look across. Look what it is. Another ghost house sitting on a roof. They're everywhere, these things. It's like they're trying to tell me something. So first thing I do when I'm making a holiday film, no, not a Christmas film, a holiday film. It's when you basically write a film as an excuse to go on holiday, but you didn't hear it from me. The first thing I did was develop a list of the things that I wanted to do on my holiday in Thailand. And this would form the basis of the script. So first I thought, I want to eat at a really, really nice restaurant. So I thought, what's a way that I could eat at an expensive restaurant at the expense of the film company, right? So I wrote a scene where we had to hire out the the nicest restaurant in Thailand, in Bangkok, basically, uh, for a day. And it's where Jim... Is that what I called him? Jim? Yeah, Jim or Tim or whatever it was. He proposes to Julie, right? Uh, and therefore, the, the restaurant catered the shoot and I got to eat nice food. So you kind of see how this, like, holiday film thing works now, right? So when I wrote the scene, um, I was thinking about red curry or something, what I was going to order, and I, uh, I misspelled a word in the script, and yeah, Jim read it out, unfortunately, so. Will you be my wife? <laughs> yes, I yes. am. Um, it was meant to be wife, uh, not why, um, so, yeah. I love you, Julie, for better or for worse. So I'm not 100% sure whether that's what couples say to each other, but like me and my partner have been sleeping in different beds for years, so I figured like I'd just leave it in there because, well, that's basically that. That sums it up. Yeah. Yeah. So I probably should have thought about the marriage proposal thing a little bit more because the next thing on my list was uh, that I wanted to go to the strippers while in Thailand. And it was kind of hard to bend the script to justify like a newly wedded couple going to the strippers together. As it goes with writing these kinds of films, I had to introduce other characters so that I got to, to go to the strippers. Uh, so I introduced two other guys. Um, they met them at the, in the hotel room and they said, congratulations on, on getting married. We need to celebrate. And what they did was... Uh, Jim and one of them, I, f I totally didn't even name them, I don't think, uh, Creepy Dude 1 and Jim go into the strippers and uh, Julie and Creepy Dude 2 wait outside. So yeah, maybe that was a bit like out of left field, but again, you'll pay for the movie in the cinema. My boss will be happy with me because the movie makes money. It's all good. So this is kind of how my, my writing process works. When I have something I want to do on my to-do list, I kind of like bend the plot uh, so that I can like shove it in there forcefully uh, and this is kind of you know it saves you having to you know come up with your own ideas and like stress your brain you can you can focus more effort on um, on uh, on the strippers so here's another thing on the way to the strippers I decided that I'd slide in some advice on how to rip off poor street vendors because uh, none of them sell sandwiches can you believe that? There is no sandwiches on any menus. Anyway, basically what we was just saying earlier, any price there, you half it. That's the rule of thumb. Where do they get off not making people like me feel comfortable in their home country? So I thought I'd give other tourists uh, tips on how to undercut and rip off desperately poor uh, Thai people um, just trying to get by. You won't believe this. I just walked in there and they had a menu and it wasn't in English. There wasn't even sandwiches on the menu. What am I meant to eat? Ugh. Wait, where am I? So, here I am in Thailand. Um, I'm kind of in my element right now. You know, I'm in a kind of rough part of town, a really poor part of town. Um, and you know, I really want to immerse myself in the culture of the place. That's how I write. That's how I write good films. I just immerse myself in the place, in the culture. Actually, come to think of it, there aren't, there aren't any white people around here. I 
got scared, so I came into 7-Eleven. The recognizable symbols are comforting to me. And they have Coca-Cola. I can read the word. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. It's like I'm at home. Well, the second rule after the to-do list um, on how to make a holiday film is you don't delete anything um, because that gets in the way of going to the strippers, getting drunk, and uh, eating chicken pizzas at, uh, at KFC. So what should I say about Thai culture in the, in the movie? You're eating fucking pizza in a KFC in Thailand. Shut the fuck up. When we got home, my partner called me uh, white bread, um, and if anyone could like comment sort of uh, what that means, I'm not sure, but she uh, she seemed to be pissed off that I would, like, you know, I'd come to another country and eat at a fast food chain that I had back home, but, you know, I mean, failing, if they had have sold sandwiches on the street, I would have eat the, eaten that, um, so I don't fully understand the gripe, but uh, she made me promise that to go on a hike with her the next day, and it would be a 10-hour overnight bus trip, right? I had to come up with a reason for going on the hike uh, to put in the film. So I changed the tone of the script, and uh, I made the creepy dudes invite the newlyweds on a 10-hour drive into the middle of nowhere, uh, just all of a sudden only having known them for two hours and, like, having already established that they were going out for drinks that night and not just a 10 hour uh, cross country drive. Guys, come on, we're just gonna drive to the country right now? We have one time on this planet. Not that it's within my job description to make any of this make sense. I put in like a little kind of token scene where uh, Jim and Julie were discussing that maybe they shouldn't drive 10 hours in the middle of the night, you know, when they haven't even checked into their fucking hotel yet. We barely even know these guys. But then I realized they're in earshot of the creepy dudes uh, driving the van, and like they could totally overhear them calling them creeps and preempting that they were gonna murder them. Uh, but again, like not in my job description to clear up all that stuff. Um, I just write the thing that makes the money. So I left it in. Uh, so on the bus, the toilet door was broken and the smell of poo was wafting through uh, the bus. Uh, so that, it was hard, quite hard to sleep, really. So the place we arrived at was really quite beautiful, um, but I did make the mistake of telling my producer where I was going. And he seemed a little bit angry that I was just going on hikes on company money, uh, but I, I tried to set the record straight with him. Yeah, no, no, it's not a hike. I'm going location scouting. Yeah, I know we have someone for that, but I figured like I'd go, you know, I'd immerse myself and then I'd be able to write better. No, no, I'm not taking the piss, mate. I'm trying to make you a film. It's not. Uh, he hung up on me. Should we go on the hike or? <laughs> so on the hike, it occurred to me that it was my place as a filmmaker uh, to take culture and kind of make it malleable and crudely kind of like rip it apart and throw bits away that I didn't like and kind of um, thanklessly mutilate uh, what it was for my own for my own ends, for my own profit. Wow, what a beautiful view. So inspiring. It's bringing something out of me. It just makes me want to kind of misrepresent a country and shill myself out to film production companies. This is so beautiful. I realized I could just use the ghost houses as an idea uh, for my film. And I didn't have to make the ghosts like tiny little ghosts that live in these tiny houses that smoke normal sized cigarettes, because that's not scary. I didn't have to stick to what Thai culture is about. I could kind of do my own thing with it. 
And, you know, I realized I could write a story about normal-sized ghosts coming and haunting people, because that's, I mean, that's objectively more scarier than Stuart Little, the ghost. So it all started to kind of fall into place. The creepy dudes uh, driving 10 hours with Julie and Tim uh, could be to a ghost house graveyard where they throw all the old ones out, right? The creepy dudes could maybe convince the couple to take something from one of the ghost houses, and they see this creepy ghost who got burnt from smoking too many cigarettes, um, and then the creepy dudes bail and leave them in the middle of nowhere. And the idea is that they transferred some kind of curse that was affecting them onto the newlywed couple. Um, and, and by the way, this is the only use of practical effects in the entire movie. The rest is quite underwhelming. I mean, check out the, like, the ghost looking out of the throat thing. Awful, right? You could do that in paint, right? But this one, we made sure we made prosthetic masks and they, it was all creepy and shit. Uh, that's because that was for the trailer. So this is another tip if you're making a, um, a money-grubbing little film. The things you shoot for the trailer should be good. The rest of the hour and 28 minutes of your film, uh, you don't have to put effort into it because they've already paid. That's the way that transactions work in this society. You pay for something and then you get it. Uh, and unfortunately there's no, there's no real, like, who gets a refund for a movie, really? So it's kind of foolproof. Then it says day one on the screen with little to no context, um, and yeah, I borrowed that straight from that, what's that Seven Days movie? Uh, the Rings. Um, so, start from there, uh, what are you gonna do about it? That's what the, the industry's based on, plagiarism. Not even ashamed to admit it. But because she was sick and she's hallucinating, I got to put in a scene with an elephant. And you know what that meant? Yep. I got to ride a fucking elephant and it was awesome. I mean, the scene made absolutely no sense. I mean, we see this ghost woman and then the next thing we see is an elephant and we're like, wait, is there an, two antagonists? One is an elephant and the other one is a woman. It doesn't make any, it doesn't make a lick of sense, but... I got to ride an elephant, and I would ruin a thousand films to do that again. It was it was awesome. But seriously, don't ride don't ride elephants in Thailand. It's um, it's quite it's quite bad. They don't look after them. Okay, so there's something that you need to know about horror films that kind of is different from from other films. You get to a certain point in the movie, uh, where the film literally writes itself, and I I I mean that quite literally that. There is a program called the jump scare generator, right? And so you let it run, and basically it writes, like, act two and three of your horror film, uh, writes all the jump scares for you. It's, it's, quite, it's, quite, it's quite clever. I got to just hang out at the hot springs um, instead of having to sit there and write. So that was good. Hey, what are you doing? Aren't you meant to be writing a film? No, nah, I've got a program that does it for me. See, what you do is you just write a basic plot. Halfway through, you enter the characters, the antagonist, what kind of ghost, monster, or demon you have, and then the program just writes a bunch of jump scares for you. It's piss, and I can just relax in the hot springs. Cha-ching! Free holiday! Unfortunately, the, 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 one of the jump scares that it generated was, uh... was a cough. <laughs> How is this helping? Um, and that... That didn't really make sense, but we le again, we left it in there because you don't delete anything. Uh, yeah, it wrote a jump scare to a cough. Uh, so not the best, but... So I was obliged to seek out a way for Tim and Julianne to, like, overcome the evil um, that was following them. Sorry, uh, Jim and, t um, Jim and, Tim and Julie, sorry. Uh, turns out my producer's concern about spending production costs on a holiday weren't entirely unwarranted, um, admittedly. Uh, I'd ordered so much room for service that we didn't have enough money to find, uh, enough locations, and I had to find a free place to, to shoot. Holy shit, look at the place we just found. It's an Whoa. abandoned shopping mall. Weird. I reckon to save some money, we should just like film a scene that doesn't make any sense in the context of the movie in here. Cool, like, yeah. Like just spend like half an hour of screen time in like an abandoned place to save some money. That sounds all right, huh? So 
So when Jim realizes that his fiance is slowly passing over to the Shadow Realm, uh, seeing all these terrible things jump out at her, thank you, jump scare generator, uh, Jim has to confront the ghost that they'd summoned. I saw a poster for a Muay Thai fight in the street and figured it'd be cool to choreograph a really badass fight between the ghost and Jim. Um, you know, I could work out a few times, uh, at a Muay Thai gym, uh, of course, at, at the expense of the, of the production company again, and, uh, unfortunately, the next thing I knew, I was in a, I was in a Muay Thai fight, um, uh, yep, I may have overstated my abilities and willingness to, uh, get kicked repeatedly in the face, and I was in, I was in a Muay Thai fight, um, What are, you, what are you doing, mate? Your fight was... You just missed your fight. I don't really need to prove anything. Like, I don't... Do I really need to do it to write a fight scene in a movie? Yeah, but you just ran away. Yeah, look, I'll just... I'll just throw something together. I'll throw a shitty fight scene. It, it doesn't matter. I don't need to fly. It's, it's cool. Let's go. Let's go home. Right? Done. Anyway, so after strategically evading the fight, uh, very smart there, um, I just threw together some nonsense, like, fight scene at the end, because I really didn't learn much, uh, at all, uh, and I think it involved Jim having to cut off his finger, and, and that saved Julie somehow, I'm not, I can't, like, I was pretty drunk most of the time. I don't really remember what I was thinking uh, when writing that. Yeah, and I, I kind of had to leave Thailand because I owed people money that uh, had betted against me in the fight. So, uh, I kind of had to wrap up the film there. Uh, no reshoots for, for Ghost House, even though it, it needed them. I mean, there's one scene where there's a still a picture of a door handle, um, as opposed to actual footage of it, which is, yeah, there was some definite, there was definitely a need for, for some reshoots there, but, um, but yeah, I was going to get my head kicked in and all my money stolen. So, uh, yeah, deal with, deal with ghost house as it is. Thanks. Um, and yeah, I guess we're kind of, um, I guess we're kind of done here. So hope you enjoyed the, movie and the production like whatever i don't care i got paid anyway i don't care all right bye